Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Jimmy and welcome to my new video. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over the basics of masking in Adobe After Effects CS6. Now I know I said Wednesdays would be usually something gaming related, however, for the past few weeks it's just been me talking randomly over a video, so I thought a lot of you would find this more helpful and more useful. Um, so let's get right into it. What we're going to go ahead and do is start off by creating a new composition. And we're going to make this 1280 by 720, 29.97 frames per second, 10 seconds long, and we'll call this tutorial. Okay, so now that we have this, what we can go ahead and do is just make a new layer for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to go up to Layer, New, Solid. Now I'm just going to call this Black Solid 1, I don't need to change that. And we're going to make it Comp Size and click OK. Alright, so what masking is, is it's pretty much used to hide or show a certain part of a layer. Now with masking, you can make them in many different ways using some of these shape tools up here or you can use the pen tool for more control. So for this example, I'm just going to grab our rectangle tool and just show you something really basic. So once we've grabbed our rectangle tool, what we're going to need to do is make sure that we select the layer that we need the mask on. So in my case, it's this black solid one. Now what I can go ahead and do is just draw my rectangle in, and you can see what's happened is it's hid everything on that layer except for what is inside this mask. Now we can go ahead and move this mask, and you can see it's going to show what is inside that mask anywhere we move it. Alright, so what we can go ahead and do now is create another mask. So what we're going to do is switch to our ellipse tool and make sure our black solid one is selected again and we can go ahead and draw on top of it. Now you can see it adds that on to the selection. So now you can stack that as many times as you want and create some kind of funky shape if you want, something like that. However, now you can see that we've got two masks down here. Now with this add function here, this is pretty much asking you to decide what to do with that mask. So for example, if we go down to our second mask here, click where it says add and change that to subtract, you can see it's going to subtract everything inside that mask. Now alternatively, if we swap those around, you can see it's going to show everything except for what is inside that original mask minus this circle. So just familiarize yourself with those different functions there and uh, you should be right. So what we're going to do now is bring in a picture just so it's easy to demonstrate. So I'm going to drag in this uh, photo here that I've been working on and just scale it down to fit our composition. So here it is here. Now what I'm going to do is make sure that we select our layer again, our picture layer. And this time I'm just going to grab our rectangle tool again. And for example, let's just draw this rectangle here. And you can see again, it's showing only what is inside that mask. Now if we go ahead and move this mask around, you can easily see now that it's showing what is inside that and nothing else. Now if you want to scale up your mask or change it, you can select your mask one down here and press Ctrl T and it'll bring up your transform options. Now you can go ahead and hold the shift key and scale it from here. You can even rotate it or move it. And once you're done, you can just double click or hit enter and it should go back to here. Now if you kind of want to alter the shape, you can click on the corners here, hold Control and Shift, and you can see that the corner kind of hollows out. Now you can go ahead and drag that wherever you want, and you know, create some interesting shapes. So let's just delete our mask by clicking on it and pressing Delete. And let's show you how to use it with the pen tool. So again, you want to make sure that you always select the layer that you're using the mask on. If not, you can see it's just going to create a shape. So with your layer selected, let's just create a random shape and there we go. So again, as usual, it's only showing what is inside there. And then we can go ahead and grab our selection tool by pressing V or clicking up there and we can edit each one of these different nodes. Okay, so let's go over some of the different masking properties. Now if we quickly create a rectangular mask with our layer selected again, you can see we've got the add settings here again. Now let's go over subtract. So as I showed before, that's taking out everything that is inside that rectangle. Now if we go to something like intersect, you can see it's only showing the spaces between where those two masks are intersected. If we go to something like difference, you can see it's showing everything except for in between those two masks. So that's a good way as well to, you know, show or hide different things. Now if we go ahead and remove our first mask again, let's go over the masking properties. So to get these, with your mask selected, double tap the M key on your keyboard and you can see we've got mask path, mask feather, mask opacity and mask expansion. Now these are all fairly self-explanatory but I'll just go over them anyway. So with mask feather here, what it's going to do is pretty much just feather your mask. So at zero, it's obviously a straight edge and the higher we raise that value, you can see the more feathered the edge is. So now if we zoom out, you can see it's kind of got a nice soft edge. 
Now quickly before I go any further, if you don't want to see these yellow markings here when you're trying to edit these options, you can go ahead down here and where it says toggle mask and shape path visibility, just click that and you can see it disappears. And then simply click it to get it back. Okay, so with mask feather, we'll just bring that back in a little bit and you can see it's got a nice soft edge now. Now with mask opacity, this is just going to affect the mask but not the opacity of the overall layer. So that's just going to affect how visible the things are within the mask and not the rest of the stuff around it. And mask expansion, you can either bring that to a negative value and you can see it compresses the mask or expands the mask if you put it to a higher value. So let's just bring that back to zero and bring our masking back to zero and then toggling our masking on. So that is pretty much the basics of masking. There's not too much else to it. I hope this helped anyone who was having difficulty grasping onto it. And uh, if it did help, be sure to hit that like button to help me out. You can share it on your Facebook wall or anything like that if you think anyone will find it useful. And you can subscribe for future tutorials. Um, otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.